place. Amen. But uh, well, I know he's picking on one another when I when I got him. But Amen. Just you know, have to bear with me. Amen. On the scripture. Amen. What God's given to me. Yeah, I'll give myself now. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, well, let's go to Romans, if you will. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6. Amen. Sometimes the Lord floods it. You just have to hurry up and write it down. And, Amen. Amen. Yes. Just get on the bull and write it. Amen. Everybody been on the Holy Ghost bull before? You just get on that Holy Ghost bull and you write it. Amen. An awesome place to be. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Jesus. Amen. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. If you got it, say amen and we'll amen. get started. Amen. Know ye not that to whom you are yield yourselves, your servants to obey. His servants you are to whom you obey. Whether you sin unto death or, in, or of obedience unto righteousness. Let me reread that to you. Know ye not, comma, that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, comma, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. I just want to preach to you knowing your true identity. That be all right? Amen. Kind of about what you was, I don't know how we all getting on the same link, Pam, but amen, but I got that from the red light down there at Baker to, to the corner up at Hester Church Road, what I'm fixing to give you, amen. Wow. Come on. God's good to you. Thank Lord you. God, as we come before you, Lord yes, Jesus. Lord, Lord, I thank you so much, Lord God, for who you are and what you are, Lord. Lord, I thank you for this word. I thank you for the spirit, Lord God. Lord, I just thank you right now, Jesus, Lord, that you would move in such a way, Lord. I know that many scriptures that I'm going to give today, Lord, you've already impounded on the, in the word in me, Lord God. And I, I thank you, Lord, for the structure of it, Lord. I thank you for all that you do, Lord. Lord, I pray, God, today for the anointing, God, to be so strong, Lord, in this place on me, God, that I can deliver, Lord, this valuable word, Lord God, of who you are and what you are, Lord. For there is none like you, Lord Jesus. Lord, there is none like you, Lord. David said, come and taste and see that the Lord is good. I am so glad I have tasted of you, Lord. I thank you so much of who you are, Lord. And I praise you today, Lord God. My God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Jesus. I know I get loud and I apologize. I apologize, but I can't help it. Amen. But the word says, and I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures, and I'm going to, I pray that the Lord will let me take off running, if that be all right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 30. Amen. Why stand we jeopardy every hour? Amen. Just knowing the true identity, amen, of who, amen, we're supposed to be. Amen. And I, I want to, if it be all right, to give a, 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 another demonstration like I did a couple of Sundays ago. But I, I, I want to make sure that we, as a people, amen, understand the importance, amen, of redeeming the time is what the Word says. It's our job Amen. To, to, to be ready in season and out of season. Amen. amen. Sister Karen, when they look upon us, amen, they ought to see something, amen, a difference. Right. Amen. Brother Bob, when they're around us, amen, they ought to be able to feel, amen, a spirit, amen, a comfort, a peace. Amen. They is something, amen, when people get around us, Amen. They ought to be able to feel the power, amen, of the Holy Ghost. I believe it that way, amen. I know 
I know, I know, I know, amen. The Bible said when Jesus walked, amen, and even the devils, even the demons would cry out, amen, and say, we know who you are, and he would shut them up, amen. He wanted his people, Sister Crystal, to know who he is, amen, and us today, we're supposed to know Amen. Who he is. Yeah. And we represent him, Sister Karen, today. We ought to know our true identity of who we are. Come on. Amen. Come up, stand up here with me just a minute. That'd be alright. I was going to use you, but I didn't want to scare you to death. That'd be alright. <laughs> amen. So tell me, Amen. When you see me and her standing side by side, what do you see? A woman. A woman. Are you sure you see a woman here? Mm -hmm. You can yeah. identify her as a woman. Yeah. And when you see me, what do you see? A man. A man. That should, that's opposite, correct? They should be the same, the same as light and darkness. Is, am I right? So is that uh, so we all in agreement when you see her, amen, that's what you see. Yeah. I know a godly woman, I get that, but what I'm trying to make distinctive right now that we all understand right now to make sure that we understand when people look at us sister when they look at you they ought to be an aura about you amen they say they something different is that right amen you can see amen because I want to be able to preach to you if that be alright amen I want to preach what God has given to me to preach to you amen so I want to make sure today amen I'm not a closed line preacher Amen. I believe this with all my heart. Amen. When the Lord comes inside of you, amen, he's going to take away, Sister Karen, things that's not of him. Right. Amen. I shouldn't have to preach about what you should wear. Amen. I don't think I should have to preach, amen, what you say, amen, if you got the Holy Ghost in you. That lets me know, I'll be honest with you, whether you got it, amen, or if you don't, amen. I know that some people struggle, amen, as they try to find the Lord, how the enemy will come on and attack them, amen. And I like to hear people that's struggling. I like to hear people that's battling, amen, trying to hold on come to on. the white throne judgment, amen. And I also, sister, love to hear them. It says, I have conquered this battle, amen. It lets me know their true identity. That they're growing in the Lord, church. I'm sorry, that's just a word. That's a word. There in Numbers 15 38, amen. We're going to talk carnal and we're going to run in there and get spiritual. That'd be all right. We know that the Old Testament, everything was carnal, amen. Whether they used the ox, amen, or the sheep, or whatever, amen, to, 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 to pass, to roll up the sins, amen. The Lord said this to Moses. He said this. Let me get it. Right, so I don't lie to you. He says, speak it to the children of Israel and bid them that they make, amen, them fringes, amen, and put on the borders of their garments and let it be blue, amen, that they would have identity, amen, that this, amen, is the children of God. I want y'all to see this for a moment. But we know what Paul wrote, that the old covenant, if it had not been, if it had been faultless, there would not have been need for a new covenant, amen. Let me say this to you, if all I I had to do was wear this white shirt to be found righteous, Brother Bo. I would wear a white shirt every day. But this white shirt will not make me righteous, church. Amen. It won't make me full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I got to do something, amen, to find my true identity. In Romans here it says, whatever I bow down to, Whatever I serve, Sister Carrie, is going to be my God. Amen. And I choose the one true God. I choose the one that robed himself in flesh and dwelt among men. I want true. Amen. It fed me his word when I asked, who are you? Yeah, come on. Show me you right. that I may know you right. and understand, church. The Bible says you have not. Amen. Because you ask not. That's just what the word says now. Amen. Amen. So when they seen Israel, and they seen that blue fringe, amen, on the outer garments on the border, they would say, there's an Israelite. Uh -huh. But we know as we read that word, 
That the garment doesn't change the soul of man, does it? Right. Because they were what the Bible says, amen, that God said they would go a hoard. Yes. You know what it says? Mm -hmm. they would, the Lord would find them, amen, mixing up, amen, with the heathen nations. Right. And they would worship their idols. Right. And it made God mad, and it would put He would put Israel <laughs> in bondage. So we know, church, Amen. The material things, amen, ain't going to get us where we need to be with God. That material thing, amen, is not going to prick our spiritual uh, uh, inner man, amen, to keep us, our spiritual consciousness walking right. Am I right or wrong? That's right, man. That's right. Knowing your true identity today. I call it checking the inventory and I. I know Sister Caroline, we, we quote that scripture about he didn't give us a spirit of fear. Man, that's the best inventory scripture I've ever had in my life. Amen. Yeah. Did not give me the spirit of fear. Right on. Sister Crystal's ugly as it may seem. That's why I believe the Lord gave us two of these. Praise the Lord. When somebody begins to tell me and gives me their Resume of how much God's in them this side and the other. And then when the storm shows up, Come on. amen, and the fear begins to get over them, whether it be sickness, or whether it be the enemy or whatever, and somewhere along the line, and I'm just talking, church. Amen, I'm just going by word because he said he didn't give me the spirit of fear, church. Amen, it lets me know they're true identity is showing up. Amen. They really, Sister Shelley, ain't got what they say they got. They say it with their lips, but it ain't in here deep in the inner man's soul. Amen. Then they walk in where they need to walk because the Bible tells me and give me the spirit of love and of power and of sound mind. And I'm telling you something, when the enemy shows up, amen, when sickness shows up, amen, it's time to roll up the sleeves and say it's battle time. Yeah. It's battle time. If the Lord's for me, He's not against me. Amen. Come on, Amen. church. Mm. It's all right. I know I holler, but it's all right. Y'all stay with me. I'll keep you awake if I don't do nothing else. Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians. I'm going somewhere else. Y'all just hold on. I'm going to build you a foundation when you leave here today. Amen. This big bad wolf won't be able to lower it down for you. That'll be all right? Come on. Yeah. Come on. Because he's going to show up. Yes, he is. He's going to show up. Don't let nobody never tell you, amen, <coughs> big bad wolf don't show up. Right. He shows up. This is what it says in the Word of God. If you want to believe it or not, that'd be up to you. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Right. Saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean and I will receive you. That's what the Word says. Let me go just a little bit further. Let me back up a page here. I was trying to scribble all this up down but it's all right. I'm okay. I know what the Lord said. Amen. Amen. And I'm all right with that. I think I'm right. I may be wrong, but I was trying to write it down. <laughs> Somewhere I've lost it, but it's all right. Yes, I got it right here. Which cause we faint not, but through the outward man perishes. This perishes. Mm -hmm. Yet in the inward. Man, there's a new day by day, amen. And that's something that I want to, us to understand for just a moment. Amen, we got to renew this thing. This thing's got to be hot and it's got to stay hot. Amen, we can't use this in any other way. Amen, then, then Lord have mercy, I'm in the wrong spot anyway. God's good to us. Y'all just stay with me just a minute. I know I thought I missed the scripture right here. <clears throat> Yeah. 
1 Corinthians 4.20 For the kingdom of God is not in word, but it's in power. Amen. Knowing your true identity. Knowing your true identity. You know, when we go back and we look at that in Ephesians, and Sister Chris has taught that a couple of Sundays ago about the whole armor of God. Mm -hmm. And to me, I call it weighted words. Sometimes we, we read scriptures and we, we miss some pretty good statements in them in them scriptures. But in that in in that in that setting as she was teaching that it says when you've done all is to stand. Uh -huh. Church, that's the power of God. Absolutely. Right. And she just read that about Shadrach and Meshach in the Vindigo. When you know Yeah, I'm going to say this. It's going to sound ugly. Knowing your true identity. I've had so many, or so many, some, however you want to call it, <clears throat> try to prophesy. Okay? Yeah. Some in here, some other places. <clears throat> and let me be sure about this when I say this. This is not an arrogant statement. This is just the truth. Because, again, you can't argue with the truth. <clears throat> Somebody ever prophesies to you or prophesies and they come up to assure what they prophesied is true, you'll know that they false. Let me say that again. If they speak, they'll say it to the Lord and they want you to get in their corner with them, you know that it's false. I cannot find anywhere in that word or any time the Lord has spoken to me that I spoke it, and I didn't care if anybody liked it or not. Right. It was the Lord, and that's just the Lord. Any time right. I've seen a prophet prophesy <laughs> and run to the elders and say, are y'all with me I on this? Yeah. Right. They spoke to us, said the Lord, and they left it alone. Right. Again, knowing your true identity. Amen. Jesus said, beware of them Come on. that deceive you. Yes. And I need you to grab a hold of that today and understand. Again, Amen. I'm not going to wear no blue fringe on my outer garments. Amen. But how am I going to walk? I'm going to walk upright. Amen. I'm going to abstain from the appearances of evil. Amen. I'm going to not touch the unclean thing. My mind is going to be on the Lord's work. Yeah. Amen. I'm post. Amen. What it says in Mark 16. Amen. Them that know the Lord. Amen. Signs and wonders is going to follow them that believe. Amen. And that's, that's the thing. Knowing Amen. Your true identity. Yes. Amen. I'm not being cold hearted, please, when I talk and I try to <laughs> preach to y'all. Amen. But at this day and age where we at and all, we shouldn't. Amen. The true worshiper Come is going to worship in spirit yes. and in truth. Yes. Right. And a true worshiper has been in front of the Lord and the Lord has spoke back and you've communed. You're not going to be rattled with the times that we're living in these perilous times. You're going to believe the word. Amen. And it said, be ye not troubled, for these things must come to pass. Amen. And I think about what Elijah told the woman. when He, she, he said, go fetch me a vessel of water to drink. Amen. And she never qualmed about it. Amen. I can't find. Amen. Saying, did you lose your mind? Amen. And the second thing is when he began to drink the water, amen, he said, make me a cake. Amen. And after you make mine, make you and your sons. Amen. I never see the argument or the concern of the woman saying, do you realize this is it? Amen. I'm telling you something, church. Amen. Somewhere along the way, amen, even when uh, Elijah went back, amen, and raised the woman's child up, amen, or Elisha did, excuse me, and, and, and the woman said, amen, that now I know that you are a true man of God. Amen. Knowing our true identity today, church, we can't got time, amen, to be rattled, amen, with the things that's going on. Amen. We must, amen, me be about our father's business. I've read it to you in Revelations where the devil knows his time is short, so he's running rampant. Amen. So if you know the word, come on somebody, what are you doing about it? If you know what the enemy's doing, what
What are you doing about it? Come on. Come on, amen. I know this is me and it's carnal and it's my business. And I know what I'm fixing to say is going to be ugly. But again, you can't argue with the truth. That'd be fair. Right. You may not like it, sister, but you can't argue with it. And boys on them grass trucks, I had the worst time. I just, I mean, you talking about tortured, I'm a tortured human being. But sister, I'll get on that truck and I'll clean them accounts <laughs> up. And I told one here the other day, it's, it's been 30 days now, believe it or not. And <clears throat> And they'll sit there and lie to you, give you ever, ever. And they don't really realize after 28 years, I've heard every excuse. I don't know they've created another excuse. And I looked at this one the other day, and that's what I said to them. I said, they cleaned up now, okay? They cleaned up. It's all cleaned up. We sprayed, we trimmed. Me and Billy's went through there. It's 100%. But I said, in 30 days, I'll fire you. Because you know why? I said, you'll skip. <clears throat> you'll go by next time every two weeks and you'll and you'll cheat because it looks good. Yeah. But I said that next time in 30 days is she's gonna be grown up again and I'm gonna get a phone call. Yes. I know that it's right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, he ain't unemployed. <laughs> I need you to understand something right now. God has spoke his word. Mm -hmm. Those that hold on to the ends shall be saved. Come on, he has warned and he has warned and he has warned. How foolish can we be? Come on, brother. Be not deceived. Come on. Get all of it that there is. Here I am. You're right, you're right, sister. I am the bread of life. Please eat of me and survive. Amen. That is something that I want you to, I want to, I want to read this to you. I found, I say I found it and I've read it before, but but it's okay, amen. But this is the time that the Lord wanted it spoke. But I I I want to I want to read this to you that, that it makes sense to you. It's all right. It's, just stay with me. I ain't crazy. This is what God told Ezekiel to tell Israel. You remember? He called his, he called Ezekiel. And he said, hey, Ezekiel, I want you to go and prophesy. The times that you're in that 70-year bondage with Israel, I want you to go around and I want you to try, amen, to get these hard-headed people to convert. Again, you can't argue with truth. Are you ready for this? He said, Ezekiel, they ain't none of them going to listen to you. But this is what I want you to do. Can't argue with the truth. Now, let me say this before I read this to you. Some people ain't going to make it. I'm not being ugly. I'm telling you the truth. That's the truth. Jesus said, I died for many. I gave my life ransom for many. Not all, but many. Why did he write it like that? Because everybody is not going to partake. Right. Everybody, amen, is not going to take that and say, ooh, give me more. Give me more. Who are you, amen? You remember his disciples? And when they, they said, Master, Master, get up or you're going to let us perish, amen. And as that water was trying to capsize that ship, amen. And he said, oh, you little faith, and he gets up, amen. And he speaks to the wind, and he speaks to the storm, and they said, who is this man that even the wind and the sea obeys? Church, I'm telling you something, it is important to know who the man is, amen, that you would have him and understand and never leave his side. Because Peter did say, Lord, where would we go? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Anyway, this is what God told Ezekiel 18.32. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies. Come on. Saith the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and live. Mm -hmm. yes, Lord. It's not his good pleasure, amen, for you to die. That ain't that ain't the will. Right. In first Peter, he said it wasn't my will <coughs> that any should perish. It ain't my will. Let me read that because they something right there. They hooked right there. 
Amen. You ain't watch it. You gonna you, right. you, you get hooked in the nose and you you Come be drug on. under. Come on. <clears throat> Let me read this for you. The <clears throat> Second Peter chapter three. Excuse me. This is the second piece epistle, beloved. I write unto you now. And both of which I stir up the pure minds by the way of remembrance, mm -hmm. that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing at first that they shall come in the last day scoffers, walking after their own lust, saying, Where is the promise of his coming? Mm -hmm. Mockers. Yeah. How many times have you heard it? Long time I made a church, I heard the Lord's coming back. Okay? Since the fathers has fell asleep, all things continue, they were from the beginning of the creation. And when you jump down there to eight, I want to read you this. Because again, you can't argue with truth. <coughs> but beloved, be not ignorant for one thing, for, for this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. And a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slacking concerning his promises, as some men account slackness, but his long surface toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Everybody, everybody, that's what his his compassion is. But now remember this in verse 10 he says, But this is Sister Crystal's word. That she educated us eight or nine years ago. What the word but means change direction. So the Lord is changing direction on the next scripture. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. He's coming. He is. When you think not, he's coming. That's why he ain't coming right now, Sister Karen. Because everybody's sitting on it any day now. Right. He's going to come when gas is $1.29 a gallon. That's when he's coming. When the land's fat. Because right. you'll quit praying then. Right. You'll find your true identity. You'll quit praying. You'll quit seeking. You'll quit trying to get Sister Shelley in the church. Because, you know, they, there'll be corn stalks this tall and there'll be 40 years of corn on every stalk. That's when he's coming. When you quit, he said, I'm going to come like a thief in the night. I'm going to come when you not know. He used the parable. The king left, remember? The owner of left. And he left it all in charge to his servants. <coughs> and he said, what will I find when I come back? Will I find, what will I find you doing? Think about it, the true identity. <coughs> Whatever you bow down to, you serve. That's right, come on. Whatever's got you captivity, that's your king. Because that's what you submit to. That's when he's coming. That's when he's coming, church. There's one more thing I wanted to say. <coughs> About to give you everything out. It was quick. It's always quick. But I, I, I want you to understand if you can see this. It says, For the prophecy came not in old time, but of the will of man. But, excuse me, for the prophecy came not in the old time by the will of man. I get, I get fast and I apologize, y'all. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. <coughs> you know, think about when Moses told them to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Sister Shelley, sometimes we think it's a sin because we're just standing still and being quiet. It's obedience. Sometimes it's obedience. Sometimes when Jesus wrote, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Remember what Jesus said in, 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 in Matthew 24? Probably need to go read back and read that. Probably need to go back to Mark 13 and read in there. 
I believe it's Luke 21. You go back and read that. He said, make sure you don't do this. When you hear that the Son of Man is over there, make sure you don't run over there. That's right. And when you hear that he's over there, make sure you don't run over there. Why? Because in the last day, he's going to be all in prison. The Spirit's going to post to be inside of you that you're going to know. My sheep is going to know my voice. You know that I'm not going to come back here and walk on the face of this earth anymore. So there's no need me running over there. There's no need me running over there. Come on. Be not deceived. <laughs> be not deceived. Let your true identity be known. Let your true identity, church, be known this day. Who you are. I don't know about you, but I'm choosing to serve the Lord and know all of Him. Mm -hmm. Knowing all of Him. Mm -hmm. Let me say this to you, and this may not make no sense to y'all, but it's alright if it don't, and it's okay. Brother Bo, you may, you probably understand this more than any. I, I have watched, and every once in a while, when you say, you going to watch that show, but I like to watch that River Monsters, because they had some crazy <coughs> big fish out there. There's some crazy big fish. And I can't tell you the name of this fish, because I just lost it, but it's all right. It looks like a souped up brim on steroids. It's over there in Somewhere where you you've been all down there in the south end of the world, but he goes to investigate because he's this fish. He thinks it's piranhas attacking these people that you know out there bathing and washing their clothes. Mm -hmm. But it's um, I can't name him this fish. And so, or something like that. He's wanting to 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 go investigate it, catch one, or you know that's what he does. But it packy is a pack up. Pack up, something like that, start with P. But anyway, and come to find out where all they were getting attacked, that's all he was catching was this souped up looking brim, about this big, bad, and wide. And he says, they don't eat, they don't eat flesh. They don't eat flesh. But the problem of it is, is they converted to that because when them people's animals will die, they're chunking them out there in the water. Yeah. So they converted from what they, because they're vegetation animals, that, that this fish only eats, you know, the seaweed or whatever, and uh, whatever you want to call that, the greenery in the, in the water. Well, they converted from the greenery to eat flesh. Wow, like crabs. Right. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it was out there, you know, taking the bath and the kids were getting <clears> sucked <throat> up under and getting attacked and getting annihilated by these fish that you would think was eating other. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And people is being converted by whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever moved. Yeah. Whatever moved. And you're right, sister, they couldn't swallow the truth. And I'm telling y'all something right now. That is anything I can ever tell you, you're not going to change the book of Acts. Come on, brother. You're not going to change the Spirit of God. Come on. You're not going to change what He commanded us to do. You're not going to change that. And you would be wise to hold on to that. Come on. Because He yes. said, Many's going to come in my name that's going to be false. That's right. Many. Not some, not a few, but many. And it would do you well. It would do you well. These books are not that thick. Epistles, whatever you want to call them. But if you would just read, if you would just take the time, they not that big. If you would just read first and second Timothy, or first and second Thessalonians, <laughs> first and second Timothy, you're gonna find how Paul taught about the luringness of these enticing words of being right. lured away yes. and just and false ways. stuff and foolish questions mm -hmm. to get you tangled up and all. That's right. But it's our job to know the one true God. That's right. it, it, let me back up. Not ours, but it is your place. Amen. To be cleansed. 
is your place to keep your salvation, is your place right, to keep your soul right. right. Amen. That ain't my job. My <laughs> job is to tell you, thus saith the Lord. Whatever right. you do with it, just like when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, whether well, you grab that and say, mm hmm, come on, I'm going to follow you, or you're going to say, oh, I don't know about all that. But that's up to you. But I'm telling you something. You'll see me stand. Right. And I won't be worried. All right, amen. Because it's yes. perilous times, they coming. And some say, well, you know, you go to work and, you know, that, and, and, and you just go to work every day. And I know I have, I work, but I, I can't hit it. That's just, that's part of life. And that's, the Bible says you're going to work by the sweat of your brow. But I'm, I'm the guy that's, that's working that way, and I'm okay with that. <coughs> and I've had some say, well, if you're in the will of the Lord, the Lord have you preaching full time, and there would be none no more than, than me do that. Because it, it's getting old. It's getting old. It's just getting old work, I'd be honest with you. But I'm telling you, in, until I can step across that threshold, I'm going to do the last thing what Sister Jennifer said. I'm going to do the last thing that I'm, I know I need to be doing. That's right. And again, again, my spirit man is the most important thing. Don't look at my carnal side and say, well, you're not in the will of the Lord because you're dirty from here to there. Uh -uh. I'm not going to be deceived. Come on. I'm going to stand and not be worried that gas got up to 469 again. Gavin. See, it's already dropped down but another the dollar. And we still made, we still paid the light bill. We put food on the table. Everybody got to eat. Bill got paid. It gave me the spirit of sound mind, church, Amen. when you come in. Did I have to walk through and tread through some deep waters, Brother Bo? Yes, I did. But once I got in the confidence, that's where the problem is. Faith don't only works just because you can say, faith, I got faith. Well, you got faith because you eat off fat of the land. Let it get slim. Come on. Then we'll find out what faith is. Ooh. Let it get slim pickings. Then we'll know what faith is. I don't mind telling you it's my business. It's all right. I was telling you for this the other day. They got Justin Diesel's got my truck again, and he's put <clears throat> the boys blow that motor up, and they had put four motors in that truck. Four. I mean, they put a motor in it, and they say we got it ready, and we go get it, and we drive it down the road, and it would dump all, brother, Bo, you know, understand it? It dump all the oil at the bottom of it, just like you knocked the hole in it. It, 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 it just like you threw wood. And it done, it done. <laughs> they broke down right here, Mr. Holloway, about a, right in front of his house coming up here to cut the grass. I mean, it just stopped and it just went bruh. And when I pulled up, there was just oil everywhere. Mm. It was just gurgitate that oil out of that motor. They just had a default. They put four motors in that truck before I got one. And then I drove it 300 miles and we pulled it out of the stall and it just stopped. <clears throat> got rain every day. And they used to, I'd stand on my head and do cartwood and be, we're going to do what we can do. Rest out the way. But you'll be tried. You'll be tried. And I told Justin, he said, don't worry about it. They paid me to put them in there. I said, they must have plenty of money. That's all I know. But they find out that Jack Leg is rebuilding these motors and not let him rebuild them on motors. But I'm just telling y'all, church, true identity. Who